Hello everyone. Today, I will introduce software made in my laboratory. It's called Jinpy. It's something like a network interaction generator. Jinpy is a software written in common Lisp compiled with SBCL to create complex networks of predicted proteins from tens or hundreds of genomes. Your main limitation is the amount of RAM in your server. For instance, using a conventional computer of 8 GB of RAM, the software can deal with at least 50 genomes, each processing on average 2.200 proteins, coronibacterium proteins. However, this same machine cannot process 5,000 proteins from Escherichia coli. To achieve this last task well done, we need to compile GenP to use at least 8 to 16 GB of RAM. We also need a version capable of storing the bulk of data objects, instead of on memory, the GenPDB executable. For now, I have compiled all versions available in binaries folders to use different sizes of RAM. You can check it out on GitHub, github.com slash santosarDR slash genppi. As I still did not release the source code, get in with me if you need a compiled version with more RAM. SBCL includes the whole core of libraries for each executable, and it explains the size of the software in megabytes. I do not have a graphical interface for Genpy since it is a standard line tool for the Linux operating system. Calling the software without any arguments results in printing all possible parameters in their combinations. It also happens when starting the program with the help option. I will show a fast track to obtain results with the software. First of all, we need to create a folder containing multifasta files. Here I am showing each folder from a species of bacteria. The example I will show you is the Bucknera aphidicola. In this direct directory, I have only five genomes of Bucknera aphidicola. These genomes are represented by their proteins. For example, here, I have only the proteins from each genome in this folder. In this folder, I have 600 proteins on average for each genome. Bucknera aphidicola is one of the smallest genomes in the world, so it's simple. Because of that, it will be very fast to produce network interactions from these genomes. We already have a folder containing multifasta files of our proteins. Each file will be treated as a unique genome. I recommend that you name these files significantly because a lot of reports will mention these names. I also suggest keeping the protein names as simple as possible and short. Here you can see that I have a concise name, no special characters to complicate our lives. I have another program that can be used for this task. It tests to simplify the name of the proteins. I call it Valafasta. Valafasta tries to figure out a combination of strings identifying all proteins with a multifasta file without redundancy. If such an assignment fails, Valafasta creates a numerical and sequential identification for each protein and uses it instead of the original proteins. The files that I'm showing to you now were processed by Valafasta. The Valafasta software is also available to download with the GenP folder on GitHub. There are a lot of possible parameters and combinations of these on running GenP. I recommend you to start simple. Probably you will not reach out to a comprehensive interaction network on your first try. As you master the simple, do further steps. As a rule of thumb, a good interaction network should 1. Represent the majority of your proteins, number of proteins. 2. Possess at least 2 or 3,000 interactions, number of edges. 3. On average, a few hundred, less than 200, interactions per protein. Some proteins can have thousands of connections, but this should not be in a representative number. A, confi a configuration that I use too frequently is this one that I will show you. The first parameter that I have is complete. It is an excellent parameter to run at least once for each set of genomes. It does not restrict the number of interactions concerning phylogenetic profiles, or PP, it just let us go. Depending on the small number of genomes in your folder, the consequence is a massive and undesirable number of edges as a final result. The reason is that, for a few genomes, very closely related, most PPs will be very conservative. Try to analyze related genomes, but not necessarily very similar to diminish the number of possible expected interactions. 
The phylogenetic profile report only is created when we settle this parameter. If you decide to restrict the number of connections, do not use this parameter but limit the interactions. Optional parameters to limit edges are pitter limit, trim, and threshold, just citing some of them. Check out the help options for a complete list of options instead complete. The second one is the exp fixed. It sets the product for comparing neighborhood genes at the most minus W1 genes and using CWN as the smaller number of chains for concluding a conserver neighborhood. CN and PP are the primary methods to map significant connections in an interaction network. The counterpart of exp fixed is the exp dynamic. For example, with the parameter WS equal to 3, we systematically expand Windows limits on analyzing a CN. However, dynamic growing has time-consuming proportional to the WS value. Another parameter is PIF tolerate. It gives you more interactions as a final result of the PP analysis. This parameter's integers value defines the level of tolerance to accept PPs are similar between genomes. Another parameter is FISTA filter. It set the GenP to be too restrictive when deciding the similarity between two proteins, but only during the PP analysis. The lack of this parameter can also create a much more significant number of edges of the final interaction network. Well, people, let me warn you. This is a straightforward example. Bucknera aphidicola is a minimal genome, one of the smallest, so this execution of GenP will be high speed. Let's see that. It's done. Well, very fast. What do you think that happened here? In a few seconds, we got the whole pan genome on including accessory and core genomes mapped. After that, we analyzed the five genomes according to the gene neighborhood conservation and the phylogenetic profiles report. The final step was the PPI report generation for each genome. And in the result folder, we have a few reports. For example, we have the Gene Neighborhood Conservation Report, the Phylogenetic Profiles Report, the PPI Files, and the PPI Report. Let's see it. The PPI report for the genome is named Bond-AK. We have just 300 edges, according to CN and 42 according to PP and so on. The most significant number of edges was mapped for this genome. Let's see that. Now I will open the most extensive PPI network. In this network, for this specific genome, we have 120 vertices. Okay. Let's open that. Now I will make a layout for the distribution of vertices and edges. Now I will calculate, for example, the average degree for this network. When we ask Jeffy to calculate the bridging centrality, we also calculate other metrics, for example, between the centrality, bridging coefficient, and the bridging centrality. I can ask Jeffy, for example, to rank these nodes according to the bridging centrality measure. Let's see that. So, now we have the top node according to bridging centrality in dark green color.
For an initial explanation about our software GenP, I think that's enough. Please access GitHub and look for GenP. You will find all the binaries necessary to execute our software and some tutorials, including tutorials for the operating system windows. If you need some adjustment in the binaries, please contact me. For now, that's all, folks. Thank you for your attention. Please use our software. By using our software, you have the power to decide how many genomes and which species you will use to answer your scientific question. Thank you and cheers.